Hello guys, welcome to Lumist. Today we're going to talk about the expectation and variance of discrete random variables. So let's begin off by talking about expected value. The expected value of a discrete random variable is the theoretical mean of the discrete random variable. It is calculated by summing the product of all the possible values that a random variable can take and their corresponding probabilities. So for example, the expectation of a random variable x can be written as follows. So over here we have the expectation of x is equal to the sum of all the possible x values that the random variable can take multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So that is all the possible values x that the random variable can take multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. It is also important to note that the expectation of x is often denoted by a mu. So that means, so mu then represents the expectation of x, which basically represents the mean. Let's take a look at a quick example. We're going to calculate the expectation of x for this probability distribution. We know the formula for expectation of x is given by expectation of x is equal to the sum of all the possible values x that the probability distribution can take multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So all we have to do here now is plug and chuck. So that's what we'll do. So we have that we know that mu, which is another way of writing expectation of x, is going to be equal to, let's start off with the first x that we have over here, which is zero. So it's going to be equal to zero. We're going to multiply that by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.15. Plus, now we take 1. So we're going to have 1 multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.6. Plus, now it's, we have 2. We're going to multiply 2 by its corresponding probability, 0 0.25. When we calculate this, we should get 1.1. 1 .1. So although the random variable x takes up 0, 1, or 2, like it can be one of any of those, we expect x to be 1.1. Notice that the expectation of a constant is, is itself. So for example, the expectation of a constant c is going to be equal to c itself. Now let's consider a trickier situation using the same probability distribution. We take the function g of x is equal to x squared. And now from our table, we know that the probability of x is equal to 2 is equal to 0.25. But what about when we're working with our new function, g of x is equal to x squared? What is the probability of g of x when x, is, when x squared is equal to 4? Well, it is still 0 0.25. It's important to note that no matter how we scale or shift x, the probability of x is equal to x will always be the same. Let me show you this using a table. Suppose we have our regular table with an extra row which represents the values where g of x is equal to x squared. Well, say for example, we have g of x is equal to x squared is equal to zero. In this case, x would also just be equal to zero because when we square root both sides, the squares just get canceled out. Well, then the probability would still be 0 0.15. Now say we have g of x is equal to x squared is equal to one. When we square root both sides, we get x is equal to one, whose probability is 0 0.6. And when we have g of x is equal to 2 squared, which is equal to 4, then when we square root both sides, we get x is equal to 2, whose probability is 0 0.25. That is, no matter how we scale x, we end up getting the same probability. Now, how do we find the expectation of g of x? Well, we know the equation for finding expected value is as follows. So the expected value of g of x is equal to the sum of g of x for all the x values that g of x can take multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So again, we just plug and chug. We're going to use the same distribution as before to do this. So in our example, since g of x is equal to x squared, the expectation of x squared is going to be the sum of all the x squared for the x's for all the x's in the distribution multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So that is the sum of x squared for all the x's in our distribution multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. So that's going to give us, well, we're going to start off with zero. So we're going to have zero squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.15, plus one squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.6, 
plus 2 squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.25. When we calculate this, we get 1.6. So the expectation of x squared in this case is going to be 1.6. Another important quantity for us is the variance of a random variable. The variance, represented, which is represented by sigma squared, is the expectation of the squared deviation of a random variable from its mean. It represents the uncertainty of the event. So to better understand what this definition says, let's take a look at it in the mathematical notation. So what we have here is the, expected, is the expectation, so over here the expectation, of the random variable x, which is over here, minus the mean, which is over here, squared. We squared this entire thing. So we have, again, the random variable x minus mean, whole squared, and we take the expectation of that. So again, the main idea behind variance is you take the values of your data points, subtract the means from them, and square them. Your variance is the expected value of the point. Note that we can think of x minus mu squared as g of x and use the previous formula. So from the previous formula, we know that the expectation of x minus mu squared is equal to the expectation of g of x, which we think of x minus mu whole squared as. This is going to be equal to the summation of all the x's that g of x can take multiplied by its corresponding probabilities. So what this will give us is the sum of x minus mu whole squared for all the possible x's that this, random, that this distribution can take, and we're going to multiply it by, its, by the corresponding probabilities of those x's. And when we do this, what we get is a proper formula for variance of x. Then we see that the variance of x, which is equal to the, which is equal to the expectation of x minus mu whole squared, is equal to the summation of x minus mu whole squared for all the x's that the distribution can take, multiplied by its corresponding probabilities. So to calculate variance, we need to find the difference between every possible x and the expectation, then square the distance times the probability that x occurs, and sum up all over the x's. Let's find the variance for the example from earlier. We know that the variance of x is just equal to the sum of x minus mu whole squared for all x in the distribution multiplied by the corresponding probabilities. We also know from earlier that the mean, which is mu, is equal to 1.1. So now we can calculate the variance over here. So the variance, which is denoted by sigma squared, is just going to be equal to, let's start off with 0 over here. So 0 minus the mean, which is 1.1, whole squared, multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.15, plus let's go with 1. So 1 minus the mean, which is 1.1, whole squared, multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.6, plus, now we do 2. So 2 minus 1.1, whole squared, multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.25. When we calculate this, we get 0 0.39. So that's the variance of x. Here I'm going to show you an alternate and sometimes more convenient way for calculating the variance of x. So the variance of x can be shown as the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x whole squared. So this can also be written as the expectation of x squared minus mu squared. Note here that the expectation of x squared does not equal to mu squared. So when do we want to use this formula? Well, it is useful when x minus mu or x minus mu squared need a lot of calculations. Also, often mean is already calculated before variance. So to calculate variance, all we need is to find expectation of x squared. Remember how to find expectation of x squared? Just use the formula expectation of x squared is just the sum of x squared for all the possible x's that the distribution can take multiplied by its corresponding probabilities. So let's look at the same example as before. We're going to find the variance of this distribution using the new method that we've just learned. So remember the new method says that the variance of x is equal to the expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared. So let's use this method. Well, in order to use it, first we have to find the expectation of x squared. And we know that the expectation of x squared is just the sum of x squared for all x in this distribution multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. 
So let's calculate this. I know we've done it before, but we can just do it again to gain practice. So to begin with, we start with zero. So we have zero squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.15, plus one squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.6, plus two squared multiplied by its corresponding probability, which is 0 0.25. So when we calculate this, we should get 1.6. It's also important to note that from earlier on, we know that the expectation of x is equal to 1.1. So when we find the variance of x, we know that e expectation of x squared is equal to 1.6, and expectation of x is equal to 1.1, so our variance is equal to 1.6 minus 1.1 squared, which should give us 0 0.39 which is exactly what we got earlier on. So this method works. One more remark. Since the variance has a square in its formula, so you know, it's written as sigma squared, the variance does not go on the same scale as the random variable x. So we introduce the standard deviation instead. So what the standard deviation is, it's sigma equal to the square root of variance of x. So the standard deviation of x is on the same scale as the random variable x. Here are some more handy properties that might be useful when calculating the expectation and variance of random variables. So the first property we're going to look at is, for a random variable x and real numbers a and b, the expectation of ax plus b is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b. And we're going to show you how this works using the properties that we already know about expectation of x. So what we know is the expectation of ax plus b is equal to the summation of ax plus b for all x multiplied by its corresponding probabilities. So here what we can do now is we can multiply the probability of x into the, into the, um, into the sum of ax plus b over here. So that's for all x is we're going to have ax times probability of x plus b times the probability of x. This, because summation is linear, this it's just going to be equal to ax times the probability of x for all x plus the summation of b times the probability of x for all x. And now we can just multiply the a out. So we could just have summation of x times the probability of x for all x plus b times the summation of the probability of x for all x. So what do we see here? Notice over here that we already said from before that the summation of x times the probability of x for all x is just the same as the expectation of x. And the summation of all the probabilities should be equal to one. So what this gives us is a times the expectation of x plus b, just as we wanted, just as we claimed. Another property we're going to look at is to do with variances. So what the property says is, the, for a random variable x and real numbers a and b, the variance of ax plus b is equal to a squared times the variance of x. And we're going to show you this using everything we know about variances. So, no, so we know that the variance of ax plus b is equal to the expectation of ax plus b squared minus the expectation of ax plus b whole squared. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand out everything that we have here. So we're going to have expectation of a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared minus, the expect minus a times the expectation of x plus b whole squared. So how did we get this term here? Well, we used the rule that we know, which is expectation of ax plus b is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b. We learned this earlier on. So we just rewrote this to look more like that because that will be more helpful for us. We're going to use this exact same property to simplify out this term. So this is going to give us a squared times the expectation of x squared plus 2ab times the expectation of x plus b squared minus, and we're going to now um, exp expand this term here. So that's going to give us a squared expectation of, expectation of x squared minus 2ab times the expectation of x minus b squared. Now all we have to do is we have to simplify. And when we do simplify, we get a squared times the expectation of x squared minus a squared 
times the expectation of x whole squared. We can, we can factor out the a squared, which will give us a, ta a squared times the expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared. What do we know about this term here? This is the formula for variance of x. So what do we end up with? We end up with a squared times the variance of x, just as we wanted. So this is true. Now we're going to use the new properties that we've learned to calculate some expectations and variances for the same distribution that we've been working with all the way through. So first let's calculate the expectation of 3x plus 2. Well, using the properties, we know that the expectation of 3x plus 2 is equal to 3 times the expectation of x plus 2, which is equal to 3 times 1.1, which is the expectation of x that we found earlier on, plus 2, which is equal to 5.3. And the variance three of 3x plus 2 is going to be equal to 3 squared times the variance of x, again, using the property that we've just learned. This is going to equal to 9 times 0 0.39. Remember, 0 0.39 is the variance that we calculated um, earlier on. And this should equal to 3.51. So these methods make finding expectation and variance a lot easier. So to summarize, what we have learned today is the expected value of a, rand of a discrete random variable is the theoretical mean of the discrete random variable and is calculated by summing the product of all the possible values that a random variable can take and their corresponding probabilities. So using a mathematical notation, what this is, is just mu is equal to the expected value of x, which is just the sum of all the possible values that the random variable can take, so all the possible x values that the random variable can take, and the corresponding probabilities. We also learned what the variance is. So variance, which is represented by sigma squared, is the expectation of the squared deviation of a random variable from its mean. It represents the uncertainty of the event. So using a mathematical notation, variance x, which again is notated by sigma squared, is just the expectation of the random variable x minus its mean squared. Variance can also be calculated as the, as the expectation of x squared minus expectation of x whole squared, or expectation of x squared minus mu squared. The standard deviation is sigma is equal to the square root of variance x. And some properties that we learned are the expectation of ax plus b is equal to a times the expectation of x plus b for all a, b belonging to real numbers. And the variance of ax plus b is equal to a squared variance of, a, variance of x for all a, b belonging to real numbers. After learning how to find expected value and variance for a discrete random variable, in our next video we will be talking about more complex situations, that is expectation and variance of more than one random variable. See you guys in our next video.